Corrosion. It affects everyone in some way. When you think of corrosion, images of a rusty car or bridge might come to mind. Although we might see this type of corrosion on a daily basis, there are other areas in which corrosion can occur. Like the permanent storage of used nuclear fuel. Used nuclear fuel contains radioactive elements, some of which remain hazardous for tens of thousands of years. So what do we do with it in the long term then? Well, since tossing it in a volcano or sending it out to space aren't safe or predictable methods, the proposed solution is to seal used fuel bundles in corrosion-resistant containers and bury them about 500 meters underground in a deep geological repository. Carbon steel has been proposed as a container material since it can withstand the high pressures that are present deep within the earth. However, carbon steel, as we see on cars, corrodes quite easily, so we want to protect the steel, which provides the structural strength of the container, with an outer corrosion-resistant layer. Copper is an attractive candidate. How are you today, copper coating? Oh, I'm good, thanks. I'm wearing a little thin. I mean, I'm only three millimeters thick. But that's okay. That should last me about a million years. <laughs> I corrode so slowly, you know. That's right. It's predicted that less than three millimeters of copper will last a million years in the deep geological repository. But if there is a defect in the coating that exposes both copper and steel to groundwater, steel could actually experience accelerated corrosion because of being in contact with copper. This is known as galvanic corrosion, and understanding how this scenario would affect the integrity of the used fuel container is crucial to demonstrating the reliability of the current design. To study the galvanic corrosion of the copper-coated steel, I simulate a defect by drilling a hole through the copper coating to the copper steel interface, and then I let the sample corrode in salt water. While the sample is corroding, I monitor its electrochemistry, which tells me how much the material is changing and whether its corrosion rate is increasing or decreasing. I also image the sample while it's corroding using X-ray microtomography, which is a non-destructive 3D imaging technique. Here I've shown how I separate the different parts of the sample image, removing the copper and steel to reveal just the defect and any corroded volume, like taking a plaster cast. By doing this, I can directly determine how the damage at the base of the defect is evolving, like in this sequence of images showing the evolution of corrosion over 42 hours. This information, along with the electrochemical data, helps build the database of information necessary to predict the corrosion of steel using a mathematical model. Having this model, in turn, allows us to evaluate how safe the proposed container design is and whether changes are necessary. Whether the application is used nuclear fuel containers, cars, bridges, or pipelines, studying corrosion enables us to make well-informed and scientifically based decisions about what materials are suitable to use, which ultimately reduces the cost of corrosion and makes the world safer for everyone.